So the Behringer P16 is a vital piece of equipment to have on your stage, especially if you're a musician. But when you're adjusting your monitors, there's a lot of buttons on that thing and you wanna know exactly what they do. So let's go ahead and take a look and walk through every function of the Behringer P16. Let's go. So today we're gonna to learn exactly how the P16 personal mixer works in a band or stage situation. And so we've got Mr. Josiah here with us today to help walk us through how this works. So Josiah, tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, so first what we wanna do is we wanna get the P16 hooked up so that we can get all the information and the signal to it. So what you wanna do is you wanna locate where your team has their P16D, which for our campus, it's right here on the stage box that's kinda of hidden, but it has a bunch of ethernet ports right here. These are all in outputting information to your P16s. So you wanna take your ethernet cable. Yep, Andy, you have something? These are all outputting the same information. Same correct? information, every single one has the same 16 channels. Those channels can be changed by the sound guy, but it'll change it for all of them. Um, so we want to pick any port is fine, really. Um, we'll plug in, then we'll run our cable all the way here to the input, not the through, the input. All now, right? what, Josiah, what exactly is the through for? So the through is for if you have another P16 nearby and you don't, you ran out of uh, outputs from the P16D, you can run, this is basically another output that'll go to the other P16. However, if you run it through, it doesn't transfer power. So you have to get a power cable for the other P16. And, um, and so it's a way for us to daisy chain P16s yes, together yes. if we don't have enough. And since it's a through, it's not affected by the volumes on here. Now, one thing we want to troubleshoot. So then we also got to make sure we turn it, switch it on. All right. And we'll see lights. We'll see the P16 light up. Um, as you can see, it's kind of got some lights. Yep. Now, it can have some lights and still have issues. So if you're having issues, one thing to check, some, one of the first things is, on the P16D, it has a little green light here, okay? If the P16 is not plugged in, so we're gonna unplug this just a little bit. If it's not receiving, this green light will go away. This just indicates that it's sending information to P16 and they're communicating. So if there's no green light, so, you're not communicating. Yes. So that's one thing you can troubleshoot if you have issues. So once we get our P16 going, um, the base functions are right here. Hopefully at your campus, you have everything kind of labeled and it should be 90 to 100% accurate. This is what we have at our campus right now. So each of these corresponds to a channel on the P16, correct? Yep, so we wanna select channel one, which is drums, and we wanna select it. And then this is our volume here. We wanna turn it up to the level that we want, okay? And you can go through. Usually when I start fresh on a P16, I go through and I turn, which actually has happened right now, so let's say it's not like that, but I take everything and I just turn it all the way down because it can kind of get overwhelming and hard to hear stuff. And then I start to, um, then I'll bring in, once everything's turned down, yep, we don't have any channel. I'll turn up the click to kind of where I like it. Then I'll mix whatever instruments are on the drummer. I'll mix that into where I like it. And then I'll start bringing in the stuff I need. Gotcha. Um, like stems and vocals and worship leader and all that stuff. Because if you start fresh and it's everything's already turned up, it can be kind of chaotic and hard to get your grasp. So you want to think adding from zero, not subtracting from 100. Yes, yes. One of the biggest issues we get on P16 sometimes is every once in a while it'll kind of glitch out and you'll get signal from everything except for one channel you won't be able to hear. I get questions on this a lot. If that happens, you kind of have to start fresh. You have to just turn your P16 off, turn it right back on, and you should get signal back on that channel. That's a big issue we, we tend to run into. I don't know why, but that kind of just tends to clear out that issue, okay? Good to know. So then as we keep going, we've got our main volume here. So this is how much volume we hear of everything. So you wanna kind of set that as well. If you get to the point where everything's overpowering you and you can't hear enough of your your instrument so if i'm like the bass player and i can i can't get enough signal if i'm all the way up and it's not quite loud enough for me turn everything down bring your main volume up a good bit to where you like it and then mix everything to that and so it almost sounds to me like a good way to start would be to set your volume mm -hmm. low yep. get your mix set and then crank it from there yes yes and then if we keep going we'll just go across here so we have a limiter this is basically a compressor to kind of save your ears so where you put this is going to be um the loudest volume possible so if i set it here the volume coming in is gonna hit that, it's gonna be a wall, so it kind of protects your ears a little bit. So I, I usually have that all the way up and kind of adjust here, and then if I need to start compressing, I'll use it. I don't usually mess with that. Um, and then you have um, equalizers here for each channel. So if I select um, the drums, I can turn down the bass on it, I can turn up the bass, I can turn up and down the mid frequencies, and then the frequency here is what mid frequency you're using, so you can kind of sweep it across. So this is a selector, this is how much. Yes, and the same for treble. Now, these don't, these aren't activated or changing until this red light kind of lights up. When this red light lights up, it's kind of indicating I'm where it's set, and then I can start moving. So if I move this a little bit, there you go. See, I just now turned it's, on. Now yeah. it's activated. 
All right, we can also pan things over to kind of clean up our mix a little bit. So we can take acoustic guitar, pan it over to our left ear. We can take stems, pan it over to our right if we like. We usually want click dead center because that's critical. Um, and we can start panning things over, all right? Now, what happens if we have, we're gonna keep moving over here, let's hit these. We have things that drums, drums, EG1, EG1. We have double channels. What that is, is it's a stereo image. So keys is sending different information on the left and the right to make this like very wide sound. Mm. Um, it can be very annoying to take this and if you just have a dead center, it doesn't sound as good. But if you pan it all the way left and then you hard pan this one all the way right, it can be annoying because now when we turn up the volume, they're separate. So then if we want to turn keys down, we got to do it twice and we got to get them exactly right. So how to avoid that is we can link. So mm. if we link, it'll link channels. So you can only link odd number then even. So I can't link two and three, but I can link one and two. So drums, I'm gonna push through link now. And what that does is it hard pans each one, and then you can turn it up and down just as one channel. But just to clarify, when you link, the hard panning happens automatically. I don't have to go in and yes. adjust that. Good yes. to know. So then I can link. So I would just come in and I would just have this. So I see drums needs to be linked, EG needs to be linked, and keys needs to be linked. That's probably it. Then you turn off link. So then say when I select EG, it's gonna have both those channels linked already. So I just have one volume. Now this, it's in the middle, but that means it's hard panned. I can still pan it, um, but what that does is it takes that left and right information, and it goes like this, and they kind of move together. If that makes sense. So you got your left information right. When I pan, it kind of does this this function. So Versus this. Yes. Now you have it's two of them in an angle right. doing that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Good to yeah. know. So you can kind of take key electric and kind of pan them over a little bit. You can take keys. This just kind of opens up your mix and makes it sound a little more live mm -hmm. instead of everything just hitting you dead center. So then um, we're gonna skip group for. Uh, well, we'll do group. So group. Say you get everything set. You want us before you start using group. You want to get everything set to where you like it. Say you're an acoustic guitar player and you don't. You just want to turn down the band all together instead of going through and turning everything individually, but you like where they're set. You can put them in a group. So if I push down group, I can select what I want. So if I'm an acoustic guitar player and I want to do this, I'll put, uh, let's say bass, drum, I'm just gonna put all the band in it. I'm just gonna select what I like. Um, and violin and percussion, I'll do that as well. Then you turn it off. So now what happens is when I select any one of those band channels, so like if I go here, if I select a band member, everything in that group will blink and if I turn down keys, it'll turn everything down in relation to where the level's at. So if the levels are here, they'll stay the same, but instead of turning everything down individually, I can just be like, oh my gosh, band's overpowering me. I'm gonna turn down band just a little bit. That makes sense? And so to see that visually, if this was your, if this was your mix right here and you did the group, everything would go down together like this versus, you know, bringing just one down or just one, it would keep that shape of your mix while adjusting them together. Yep, perfect. And then to ungroup things, sometimes, usually what happens with group is they accidentally get grouped and then people get frustrated. So what you do is you just push group and you just ungroup everything that you want. So I just want all these gone, no groups. There you go, you're good, you're good to go. Now Josiah, what do I do if I really enjoy the mix that we've created, but I know that next week I'm gonna want that same mix I don't want to have to set all this stuff up again because every week is going to be slightly different. What yeah, do I do? Exactly. So one thing that's really great is use try to use the same P16 you have. So this is an auxiliary P16, so it's just an extra one. And that's just the name um, of it. Yes. Yeah, so you want to kind of, if you grab the same one, so when I, uh, I'm going to show you how to store, but when I store, it's just locally stored. It's not stored on other P16s. So mm -hmm. it's just on this P16. So you want to grab the same one each week. Um, obviously, if there's a rotation, we'll have to work that out with the other drummer. Hey, you save here, I'll save here. Um, but what you do is you hold down store. Right now, that means we've something is stored on five. That's what we're on right now. So we'll say, this is aux. We're gonna save on channel 12, just because it's a random channel. You can actually save 16 different things. So you just wanna be in conversation with other people who are using the P16, so you're not saving over top of each other. So hold it down, I select which one I want. So I'm gonna say 12, it's blinking in. I still hold down store, and then I press it again, okay? So, so when you stored. hold store, these no longer show the channels, but these are now save slots, yes, is that correct? exactly. Then when I want to, um, super simple, when I want to go back, I hold down, so in the Sunday morning I get set, I'm ready to go, hold down recall. Right now we're on 12, but then you would just hit 12 and it'll take it to exactly what you have. And so when you hold recall, it shows you the number that you are currently, the yes. preset that you're currently on. Yes. So you just have to remember that you saved it in 12. It actually won't show you which ones have data saved in them. Yes. Now, however, so say, I'm pretty sure, say we, so this, our keys are at this level on, save 12 
by just that, right? I haven't saved that change, but it's still thing. It, I'm still on 12. I just haven't saved that change. So if I don't recall, we're still on 12. Say you had to turn off your P16, turn it back on. You can recall and then 12 or what was it? Yeah, the keys are back to the level they were at. Perfect. So that's an easy way to save your mix yeah. from week to week. Then here's a few other things you probably won't use much, but this causes issues with people. You can hold down mute and you can mute certain channels. So if you can't hear things, always check your mutes. It's the same way as Link. It'll show you what's muted once you select me. Turn that off. Everything looks fine. Um, but if I go to these channels, I can't hear anything. So if I push mute, oh my gosh, they're all muted. Turn them back. Now, a second way to mute, it's the same exact thing, but if you select a channel, this volume knob can actually be pressed in. So if I press it in, that's muted now. So if this little red ring isn't lit up and it's not, nothing's moving, that means it's muted. So I press it again, oh, press it again, it's unmuted. Press it, it's muted. Then solo. You can solo a channel, so you can just hear only what's happening through EG to be like, hey, what's what's our guitar player doing? Oh, okay, he's doing that, or that that's his channel. And then the last thing we'll do is, um, is main volume. If you press this, this is another volume. I wouldn't recommend messing with this too much, but it does cause issues with people. When this is selected, you can't, oh, you can. But um, it can cause issues because you think you're doing something, but you're really just adjusting the main volume before the limiter. So there's a volume, this volume right here, it's how loud you want it before the limiter, then you adjust your limiter, and then this is your output after all of that. So just to like that, you select it, and oh, I think you just select something else, yeah. Okay. And so I would say best practice for this, main volume, all the way up. All the way up, let it be, and then adjust your output from this level right here. Yep, sweet. Awesome. Hope this all helps. Well, Josiah, thank you so much for helping with this, and I hope you learned something about the P16 interface.